hope you can again see my screen. Uh, we sort, it should, we should not only talk about alumni talks, LinkedIn, making connections, having fun with speed dating, but also find out a little bit more about how is Isaac doing in those trying times at the moment. So if we invited four interesting people, we have uh, Lea, the MCP of ISIC in Slovakia. We have um, Nazim, the MCP of ISIC in France. We have Rushandra, the MCP of ISIC in Romania. And Dennis, the MCVP business development in ISIC in Germany, in the house or in the Zoom today. And uh, we would like to hear a little bit from them what's going on in their countries. Uh, just to tell you a little bit the style of the session, we will start with short statements from them. Then I will ask some of my burning questions to them. And then I would ask you to put your questions in the chat or we will see how big and ruly or unruly we are and just open the mics and let you ask your question to them and see what the answers are. Okay, and I think we said that Lea from Slovakia would start. So Lea, if you want to start with telling us a little bit about Isaac in Slovakia and what's your current status? Sure, thank you very much. Okay, so when it comes to ISIC in Slovakia, uh, we are currently physically present in uh, four LCs. Uh, two of them are in the capital city, Bratislava, and then we have two uh, in Nitra and Banska Bystrica. Altogether, currently, we have around 80 plus members, uh, which is uh, less, uh, it's less than it used to be, of course. As you can also see, we are virtually present in uh, other LCs as well that are currently closed physically. We can go to the next slide to uh, know a bit more about how we survived or how we lived the last, uh, I think it's more than a year now, right? So the impact of the global pandemic on our organization, of course, was that we were suddenly unable to do any kind of cross-cultural exchanges. And as I said in Slovakia, for several years, we were focusing mostly on them. We were not running any other projects. So basically from one day to another, we ended up uh, without any kind of regular revenue streams. Uh, we were facing therefore very severe financial difficulties, but uh, we started an alumni donation campaign back in March 2020. And I have to say that only thanks to our alumni community in Slovakia, we are here also today. Uh, because thanks to their donations, we were able to survive the worst period of time until we uh, could bounce back and start creating some new projects for our entity. Uh, we can click one more time. Yes. And just to summarize how we are doing currently, uh, we are not running any outgoing volunteering exchanges or incoming, so no volunteering anymore, unfortunately. Uh, we are working a bit with uh, some professional exchanges in one LCs, which is going uh, very nicely, I have to say. Then we are also focusing mostly on the corporate market, meaning engaging the companies with our national and local portfolio and products. And we, of course, started to develop new virtual uh, projects to engage the youth in Slovakia, which was uh, a success. We successfully uh, were running this project in the past months. Yes, and of course, we are focusing on improvement of the internal processes. We are running another round of alumni donation campaign, and we are also organizing some events and developing more activities for the future. Yes, so I think that's it for ISIC in Slovakia, and we can move to the next uh, panelist. Thank you very much, Lea. Um, we go a little bit different order uh, as one of the presentation is in a different. So I would go next with, let's see, I think that's Isaac in Romania, and Rushandra is here to speak on behalf of Isaac in Romania. I. Yes, is the sound okay? Can you hear me? Yes. 
Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. I will keep it short as well. Uh, but I wanted to start my presentation with a picture of this amazing individual. We start the MC team uh, that I'm currently leading because without them, nothing would have been possible in this year. And uh, I think that I think Romania is here uh, due to them and due to the work that we have been uh, putting in the, in the past year. You can uh, click, please. Yes, uh, to tell you briefly, ICK Romania is present in 14 local committees in, uh, in Romania and we have uh, more than 300 members in our, uh, in our entity. And uh, the focus that we had in the first semester of our MC term, meaning from 1st of August until 31st of January, uh, were on products. We were running volunteering and also internships. We also had people that left from Romania in uh, volunteering exchanges. Uh, we did 100% ship to virtual environment. We didn't have anything physical, any conference, summit, everything was uh, was shifted to virtual. And we had a hybrid MC team, meaning that uh, eight people out of those 10 that you saw in the picture were physical here in Romania in Bucharest, and two were virtual working from their homes from Morocco and from Brazil. Uh, you can click one more time, please. Uh, this didn't stop us, though, uh, from uh, winning global awards on the volunteering uh, products, both in coming and outgoing, uh, in the global conference. Uh, so I think that if there is something that we are very proud of as ICT Romania, is that even in this current context, was, where nobody was believing in the product itself, we managed to win the global award and the collaboration award between ICT Romania and the ICT in Turkey for the first semester of our term. And one last click. In the second semester, we have realized that we are doing uh, too many projects on volunteering, so we shifted again the focus and we started to focus more on national sales because that was the way in which we could sustain ourselves financially. And we started to have the first hybrid in physical spaces with the plenary, so slowly we are going to the hybrid uh, way of dealing with the, with the conference and summit. We have now a fully 100% physical MC team, so everybody managed to get here, and I wanted to mention this because I saw the really most in it. And instead of focusing on volunteering, we are focusing now on internships 100% and on reintroducing sales at local level, meaning teach DLCs how to run projects or initiatives in order to bring revenues, not only nationally, but locally. And that's it. Thank you, Uwe And next one is Dennis from ISEC in Germany. Dennis. No, I'm also unmuted. Hello, everyone. Nice to be here with you. Already great to hear that your yeah, partner entities are already doing fine. Um, so I will tell you a little bit about Germany. You can go to the next slide. Um, this is basically uh, just a few informations to have a general awareness on the size and capacity that ISIC Germany has. We are nine national board members. Two of them are digital from Brazil, so they couldn't join yet. Um, currently, we are still more than 700 members. Um, here you can also see the age average and the gender distribution and um, also our distribution channels. So just to give you a first overview here, and we are still located in Bonn, this did not change. You can go to the next one. In terms of the status quo, so um, the, there are a few things that can be observed. So first of all, it's not surprising that exchange opportunities are limited currently. Here you can also see our current numbers for um, this year, which is in comparison to many entities, not a bad um, result, but it's still something that severely impacts us in terms of how we can act, especially for IGV, which is still here positioned. Um, our social incoming products are all being canceled right now, um, since they're not applicable to come here. Uh, so we are experiencing implications there. Basically, we are more focused currently on the incoming global talent product, which works um, to a certain part, especially with our global partners. Last year, we finished a fiscal year with uh, 60,000 euros and minus. Um, so we still have yeah, something to catch up upon when it comes to our sustainability. And more resources are currently put into business development and digital engagements. So as we had to adopt, obviously, um, we changed a few parts of our portfolio. We have the Youth Career Day, the Youth Leadership Day. I will tell you more about this afterwards and the Global Teacher Remote Internship Programs. As you can see here in the statistics, our membership numbers are not necessarily severely impacted in terms of quantity. However, it's very difficult to establish right now how it looks in terms of quality as the usual actions that are performed, especially on the local level. 
is something that is currently not happening that much. So we cannot say are these people that you know could handle the normal workload, but in general we have people that can actually attend. You can go to the next slide. So actually, this were two slides already. Sorry. <laughs> In terms of the key projects, uh, we have basically four elements that I wanted to highlight. There are way more, but I didn't want to go too much into detail. The Youth Leadership Day is currently our approach to positioning the topic of leadership very strongly still in our network and our market, just to make sure that people still know that we are a leadership organization. And uh, this happened already twice. It started um, when I started my term, I basically brought this to life. And now we had the second time already in April. It worked out really, really well. We have very cool guests, engaging topics. It's open to um, also external. So it's not only open to ISECers to really make sure that everyone is included in this conversation. And it's on YouTube um, and it's basically live streamed as well. So it's easy to have access to. The Youth Career Day actually happened on the 11th of May. Um, so it's not too far away. I'm just coming out of my vacation times from it. Um, it's our biggest event of the year. Uh, it's basically a digital career fair. Um, and we wanted to really still ensure that, pe that especially young talents have opportunities while we have difficulties, for example, providing global talent program. Right now we had more than 3,500 signups, which is a very high number in, in, in our um, current experience. It's the biggest event that we had in the last decade. And we had 20 partners attending. So that was a big success and we are looking forward to do the same in November again. Then uh, we focused more in terms of our exchange on Europe. You could also see from Romania as well. They also had a, uh, already a strong focus. Congratulations to the awards again. Um, but there's something where we also want to dive deeper in to really make sure that we can capitalize on this as many embassies are still being closed. So the topic of getting work permits and people to Germany became even more difficult. So we focused here on Europe so far. The long-term trend, however, is to again open it with everyone. And we are exploring the world's largest lesson because we also want to make sure that we bring this idea of teaching and the idea of also being present in schools and younger age groups um, to Germany. And it's a very cool project. I could also attend it on IC in Colombia. And uh, this is something that we would like to explore for the end of the year. So it's currently scheduled for October, November. Then you can go to the next one. So here you can see long-term and support. For long term, it's basically exchange and engagement with ISEC. This is how we currently call all the events basically that lead to something else. So we want to here make sure that, um, well, we can go back to exchange. It's still something that we want to pursue. Right now we have a stronger presence of the GT network as GV is also not supported globally and many entities are like slowing down on their engagement. And when it comes to this, however, we are also looking forward to get back to this as well. And remote opportunities and teaching opportunities is something that we're also currently exploring. And for the engagements, it's a lot of digital engagements. However, ISEC Germany becomes 70 um, next year as well. So there we want to also have a very big event where we can yeah, showcase what it means to be a lifelong ISECer as well. Um, so this is something my successor can already look forward to. Uh, however, it's also an event that we, in the best case, want to drive physically um, as well. Let's hope that that will be possible. However, we also keep digital engagements for the future. For support, resources are always supported when it comes to financial contributions or sponsoring, especially conference sponsoring when we go back to physical is super appreciated. And uh, since Christiane told me this story of the kitchen, I thought I included as well, I asked the successors if they have something they're currently looking for. And we are suspiciously low on frying pans microwaves or fridge so it's not easy to keep food for a long time to prepare it properly or to prepare it shortly um, so this is something that is more materialistic but other sites introductions and partners so in the case like um, if you know someone who's interested in engaging in events or doing something with us please let me know um, we would be appreciate this a lot as you know it makes a big difference if we already have yeah somebody who recommended us when going into partnerships talks so yeah, I hope that gave you a bigger picture and now I give it to the next person. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dennis. And I just quickly share and unshare and reshare to go to the last presentation. And Nassim, you can already un, sorry, uh, was to get out of here now. 
sorry let's see if we can make it now i think nasim yes. the floor hi. Is yours. <laughs> <laughs> hi everyone so uh i'm glad to be here with you so i'm nasim the mcp of isaac in france and this is our mc that is called mc renaissance so it's uh these five people that i'm working with at solid isaac in france this year from five we are five different nationalities so uh, if you go next. So mostly for um, our MC 2021 term, um, one of the main elements that characterized the term was, uh, of course, the change management that uh, we also saw some glimpses about, like elements of engagement with ISEC or reintroducing cells on a local level due to the current context that we have in the world that we were not able to um, to uh, focus on volunteering uh, exchanges that were the main, the main focus, that was the main focus for ISEC in France in the past years. We switched fully to internships, but we also had to uh, diversify our activities. Uh, but uh, of course, this change management also required a lot of processes implementation. So our team worked remotely for the whole term. We had actually two, uh, we are, were three people, two, two of my uh, MC members who were able to be physical and the rest were uh, virtual for the whole term. So we also had uh, virtual conferences and virtual touch points for all the term with our uh, local committees. So if you go next. When it comes to uh, the achievements that we had and the progresses that we uh, implemented in the entity during this term, so it was mostly in terms of systems and processes improvements. We were able to uh, enhance a lot the way we were delivering exchanges to, to ensure that we have the processes so that when we're able to do bigger volumes in the future, we will do them way better in, and in a better quality than we were doing in the past. Uh, we also had like new topics that we wanted to implement to enhance membership experience, to try to innovate as much as possible and yeah, leverage this, uh, the crisis also as an opportunity. So one of the topics, for example, that we really wanted to introduce and we're starting to see on how we can implement it is about green mobility and how we can create partnerships within Europe so that when we do exchanges, we do it according to the current context of climate uh, action in the world. Uh, membership experience, we uh, were able to automate how we were uh, delivering education to our members uh, through an automated certification system. And we are about to launch a self-coaching automated system as well to support our members uh, with the self-coaching uh, artificial intelligence with one of our partners. Uh, when it comes to the sales culture development, it's mostly what I mentioned before of uh, trying to diversify our activities. So we were able to implement new programs on the local level, but it's still taking time because it's a whole change management that we needed to introduce. Uh, we are currently working on delivering a youth speak forum. So it's mostly a conference about uh, uh, sustainable development goals and uh, taking actions towards them that we will be delivering on the month of June. And we're also involving our local committees so that for the next years, they will be able to deliver such projects on their own. So if you go next. So when it comes to the main challenges that we faced, uh, it's mostly regarding our entity sustainability. So uh, we were, the change management required some challenges to be completed. So we're still in the process of implementing it and it, it's taken a lot of time. So in the meantime, we were not able to receive the usual income that we were expecting from a global volunteer. So uh, it's also a part where it, it generated a lot of local debts from our local committees towards the national committee that is depending also a lot uh, on the activities that uh, the, our local committees deliver and their uh, source, the affiliation fees that they pay to the national committee. So we started the term with one more local committee actually than the last year. So we had 16 local committees, but we're currently 15 and we also have Four, four to five LCs who are at a high risk, so uh, especially for four of them to be closed. So this is also the risk that we have in the entity right now in terms of uh, the sustainability of our local committees, uh, as well as preparing mostly for the next term, the new term to have as much budget fulfillment as possible. So they start in a more comfortable position, uh, the new term of uh, 21, 22. So this is mostly on my side. 
And yeah, thank you. No, uh, that was the last slide. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nassim. Thank you also for the others for the introduction. And uh, all of you uh, alumni, you can already think about a question and post it in the chat while I kind of start the conversation. I've made some, some notes and have some questions for our four MC members. Um, I would start as Nassim ended on the note of kind of LCs in trouble. I think that's always for us alumni kind of an emotional story especially if it's you know the our home lc's uh, involved in it so maybe you can all comment a little bit on what's the situation in the different countries like uh how many are are in in trouble or have have an issue and um uh, what are you currently doing? Is it a financial issue or is uh, an RD? Uh, I remember from my time, we always had to bring so and so many exchanges. Is that currently, you know, out of the question? Like it's not counted. So, how do you handle that at the moment? And who wants to start? Um, Leia, maybe you? <laughs> Of course. So when it comes to our LCs, uh, I would say that uh, we need to define what is the risk zone here, because as I said in Slovakia, for several years, we were already, uh, some LCs were already struggling. Like, for example, we have one uh, LC that in, I would say like two years ago, they were on the edge of closing, but uh, they bounced back. And actually right now after COVID, uh, they are doing better than they were doing in the past years because they uh, used this opportunity to reinvent themselves and they started a new project that actually uh, was a success for them. But when it comes to the rest of the LCs that we have in Slovakia, I would say that they are doing uh, still on the same level. Like they are having occasional problems, but nobody is uh, thankfully on the verge of closing currently. And when it comes to the exchanges, yes, uh, for us, that is currently out of the question. Uh, we are not taking that into consideration. It is not affecting their membership at all. Okay, how is it in Germany, Dennis? Yes. Um, well, in our case, um, first to answer the first question that you have with the criteria, um, we also did not um, enforce them. So basically, we even adjusted them. For example, the financial criteria, since we do not only have performance criteria in Germany, uh, we definitely set them out. So um, since they will be difficult to meet, the same goes for the performance criteria. What we are focused on right now to make it um, still measurable and to keep the accountability of the local site is to work more with the OD model in terms of statistics. So we focus more on, for example, goal achievement on the current numbers that they have. So it's more based on what should be delivered now. In Germany, for example, we had 20 exchange that must at all times be delivered in each peak, which is right now maybe not the best thing to do. So um, there we just said, okay, you plan, for example, with six exchange in this peak. So we measure the goal achievement here and put it into our OD model. So this is how we currently measure um, LCs in terms of this. What implications does it have? It's definitely financial ones for all local communities that have liabilities. So not everyone in Germany has because sometimes they get from the university offices for free, but there are some that have to rent, for example, flats since we do a lot of exchange in certain cities in terms of, sort of global talent and not all of these flats are right now full for obvious reasons. So this is something where we lose actually a lot of money. There's the one LC Munich, um, Isaac Munich, they lost more than 30,000 um, just because the flats were not filled and we still have to pay for them. So this is something um, where we have stronger implications for certain LCs, but they also will not be closed because we are very, well, very much aware of the current implications and for those that had HR issues, we actually used this time as an opportunity. To give you one example, Isaac and Magdeburg, uh, they don't have HR capacities. They don't have members. They didn't even have an LCP. So usually they would be closed. What we did now is we searched for different LCP candidate from a different city that didn't get the position in that city. And now he's the virtual LCP. 
which means he has a team that is not in Magdeburg, but he leads the local committee. And they also uh, recruited people from all over the world actually now to support it. And this is something where we see promise in, maybe when they get local capacity again in Magdeburg itself, that they can thrive then again. So this is like a different solution maybe to showcase also how you can actually save the LCs rather than just closing them. That's a really positive note. Thank you for that. And we move on to Romania. How is Romania handling the situation? Uh, I don't know where to start to be honest answering this question. The first thing that uh, came into my mind was that our LCs in the entity were facing specific problems even before the COVID crisis. So um, one thing that happened in this year since the pandemic started is that COVID uh, just amplified the problems that we already had in the past. Uh, we were having a lot of uh, LCs uh, with debt toward EMC uh, because they were doing unsustainable exchanges, especially for volunteering. Uh, so they get their debt toward EMC. And what is our strategy now is that we are trying to uh, help those LCs and to support them to recover and to pay the debt, first of all, financially speaking. And uh, also with the recruitment, I cannot say that it went perfectly or very well, but uh, I hope that in the next year we will get there as well to have the human resource that we need uh, in ITT Romania in, uh, in order to perform. But people are still engaged overall, like uh, they are still eager to come to some spaces. Uh, some of them kept the ISEC vibe, so we are uh, optimistic, realistic, let's say, about the future uh, of the entity and about the, the members that we will have in the, in the future. That's a republic of the, of the situation. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Um, my next question is regarding the exchange. Like uh, I heard something about virtual exchanges. Maybe uh, one of you can enlighten me. <laughs> how does it work? Uh, and uh, how many of your current exchanges are virtual? Um, uh, Rushandra, do you want to start <laughs> this topic or is it not a topic for Romania? No, oh, sorry, I, uh, I uh, just uh, did my mistake. <laughs> we, are, we are currently not running virtual exchanges in Romania. Okay, okay. who of you does? I'm looking, I see Dennis. But... Yes, we do. Um, but not in a in a big quantity. Like right now, it's exactly two. Um, so one that is incoming, that is with Brazil, um, and one that is outgoing. Um, however, we don't have any experience measures yet on this, so we cannot see how successful this is. In general, it needs to be named that in Germany that would have long term potential, as we are not like we are seeing it more as an alternative right now to um, the non physical exchange. And in Germany, the legalities behind it are very complicated. So um, we are happy that we could even start it. There was a lot of back and forth with our lawyers because they, in Germany, they have specific recommendations for this. Um, so it's something we are starting, um, but the fruits and the, let's say, longevity of it can only be explored with the next generation, really where they can, you know, do the product a little bit and then see, okay, is that something that is positionable? Um, also in a framework after, we can also have more physical exchange again, as in the end, um, that should be something that can still be relevant, maybe for less privileged people, the people who have, do not have the, 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 the money to travel or um, also who just want to explore a little more digital agile working styles. Mm -hmm. Lea, how is it in Slovakia? Any experience with virtual internships? No, no, we are we are not in uh, doing virtual exchanges at all. Okay. And Franz, Nassim, did you have any experience yet? No, it's uh, also the same. We didn't have uh, virtual experiences. Okay. Uh, then let's move to another topic, which I would say membership. I think we touched a little bit already when we talked about the LCs, uh, but I think uh, I think we had at least one one ISEC alumni country which shared a little bit with us what happened over the past three four months. Uh, uh, but I think it would be interesting to know, like, how do you recruit new people? And how kind of do you re recreate virtually kind of the ISIC culture that, you know, 
on the conferences, we had the roll call dances, we had all these party games or non games, but you know, all the little things that make up the ISEC culture. Yeah. So, um, how do you do that now? How do you still recruit new people and, you know, create that sense of belonging with them to the organization? Um, Nassim, do you want to start on that? Yes, sure. So when it comes to membership management, so some things have changed because the way what our operations were requiring in terms of structures is not the same anymore. So we had changes of uh, where we were allocating our resources and uh, all, but in terms of membership in a engagement, we were actually more pessimistic due to the effect of not having any physical conference for a year, for example. But actually we had uh, the generation that we currently have is one of the most engaged that we had in the last years. Uh, the, we believe that it's mostly due to the fact that we focused on capacity building on the local level and that really helped them to engage with ISAC, especially the local committee presidents who were able to develop and then uh, drive the engagement of their uh, local committees as well. So this is a very positive note. In terms of culture, yes, it is challenging, but there is also this funny part that members are actually aware that this ISAC culture exists without really witnessing it because they have never been to a conference. So they always hear about uh, an ISEC roll call, for example, uh, people dancing during a conference and they find it, they find it fascinating without actually experience it, experiencing it and uh, waiting for it to happen. So this is uh, just a fun fact that is happening, at least in our entity. Um, in terms of engagement, as I mentioned, we were also able to push a bit the membership, uh, the membership, um, the processes that we have. So this is something that does empower uh, our membership, but we also feel like they need, they're need they striving for a lot of clarity that we're trying to provide to them, but the change management is something that is a bit heavy for now and it's the side effect also of the pandemic other than the part that uh, the capacity building has increased. Okay, thank you, Nassim. Uh, Dennis, how about it in Germany? I know you had big conferences. You always have, like, I think we talked about it last week in the alumni that kind of the last five to 10 years, people only know like one big conference house in the north of Germany in the middle of nowhere. But every ISEC knows that by heart. Uh, so, how are you doing without? being there with 300 or more people? Yes, uh, we are also dearly missing Haus Neuland. <laughs> um, in terms of uh, recruitment, first of all, uh, so basically we're doing the same as before, uh, just it's more digital. Like um, we have webinars, for example, instead of lecture presentations. But even there, uh, since the universities are operating virtually, we just approach them to have a space there. So in the end, um, the only thing that is really impacted is the idea of a booth, for example, that you have at your university. But besides this, we dive it as before, um, and we still say they can engage for a good cause. Um, they are part of an organization that forces intercultural understanding and that you can develop yourself. Um, and even now, we also go with this idea of that if you don't feel like you have a clear connection right now in these times, um, ISEC is that platform that can give you a purpose to also strive for in these current days. Um, so this is something that we're currently doing and so far it works out well in terms of quantity, which I mentioned, like we, have, we don't have a big issue in terms of recruiting people. It's always the same when it comes to the timeline, like for some LCs it doesn't work immediately, so it takes more time. Um, but we are not like completely losing our membership, so this is a good trend that we have there. Um, as for the culture, this is a very interesting point, um, as that is not that easy to replicate. And I think um, you could not completely replicate it at all, because some things are just meant to be physical experienced. Um, if you're at a conference and you see so many people being together, you cannot replicate that feeling, even if you're 400 people virtually. So this is something um, that we are also aware of. However, we st still try to make it as close as possible. 
So the volume is still as big. Um, so we have uh, that amount of people who attend conferences. Um, now it's even open for some people that couldn't attend normally. And um, there, for example, we use Slack as an extra engagement. So um, in breaks, they have quizzes, they have riddles to solve, they have challenges that they do together or separated. Um, so they make pictures as a team and put them together. Uh, they have spaces for the LC and in our strategy in HR, so in, in talent management, uh, we are also focused on establishing a culture framework. So basically they get coaching on how to build a culture, how to establish it and how to represent what makes your LC great and what makes ISEC great. And yeah, this is accompanied by conferences that we had um, that were also very extensive and additional uh, engagements, like for example, a leadership day, something like this, to also ensure that they have a connection and some activities. And there was a culture call, it was called Hands-On, organized by OMCP, um, where it was basically all coming together to just have fun, like breakout rooms, uh, then they had a party, a virtual, like we, we mastered the art of having virtual parties, I think, with a lot of different rooms to do all the different stuff. Um, so this is something we had also specific online events for, where we just invited everyone and there we were like 400 people. It was actually very cool. Um, so in terms of what the digital environment offers you, we have that capability with these options. However, we are also looking forward to have at some point the physical again to showcase also the craziness that comes with that kind of environment. Okay, I hope you can show us how we can party with 400 people virtually. We are only 46 right now. We still want to have some party later tonight, but maybe we can. You can teach us a little bit there. Uh, Rushandra, how is in Romania? You also said, I think you moved now to hybrid events. So is there anything already possible uh, back in the room? Already some dancing going on in Romania? Yes, uh, we are actually now uh, having an LCP summit. So uh, 13 out of the 14 LCPs are here in Bucharest now. We are in a break of the summit. They are in the other room. They are having sessions. Uh, so basically, we are starting slowly to get back to a normal situation, how it was before. Uh, what surprised me the most was the, the fact that they came back naturally to the environment before COVID, you know? They started to say, hey, let's just a roll call. Hey, let's do something, you know? And they were coming back gradually to it, even though in the beginning uh, was weird sometimes to go back to the see roll calls. But uh, now they're used to it. Like, uh, it's a natural summit that we have, let's say, with them. Uh, we also experienced the COVID parties online, but not with 400 people, with 100 plus, something like this. Uh, we had the Global Village in Isaac in Romania in a conference, and uh, people had uh, much fun and they enjoyed really much the space. They were talking between each other, they were again dancing virtually with their cameras open, they were sharing traditions, those things that we used to do in, in ISEC. Um, so I have the faith that things regarding the culture are not going to be forgotten. But I believe that it will take a while to adapt and to come back 100% to how it used to be. But I think that ICRs are pretty adaptable. And new members that are joining the organization can uh, catch up really fast with, uh, with our traditions and the things that, uh, that we are doing. Leah, how was recruitment in Slovakia? Did you get enough new members or is there anything... Uh you need to do specifically to find the new ones and uh, educate them on the ISEC topics and culture. Yeah, when it comes to Slovakia, uh, I would say that we we were able to find the new members without any problems. Uh, I think somebody was already mentioning that the recruitment uh, goes pretty much the same. We just adapted to the digital uh, environment. So we just needed to rethink the processes as assessment centers virtually and adjust the activities. But we were able to find as many people as we needed for our current uh, structures. Um, yes, and also when it comes to the cultural aspect, we were one of the lucky countries that actually were able to have a touch point uh, in the summer. So we had one physical conference with also our alumni and also the whole membership of ICE against Slovakia. So um, some part of the current membership was actually able to experience the proper ICE culture also physically. But we never stopped dancing roll calls, even virtually. Uh, yes, it was a bit uh, funny 
funny when we were doing it on virtual conferences, but uh, we were trying to emphasize on these things also in the virtual context and our people are having a lot of these hangout spaces only. They created their own virtual like cafes where they are hanging out, virtual offices. So the executive boards are taking it in this like fun way to engage the people also outside of the workspaces. Okay, thank you. And we got our first question from the audience. And Alex, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, I hope you can hear me fine. The question goes to the panel and it comes uh, both with a supportive background from two different stakeholders. So having been working with the supervisory group of AI for six years and continuing, first question would be, how satisfied are you in those times of the pandemic with the support you receive from AI, from the global roof? What could maybe be optimized? And the second question to the panel would be, and whoever wants to answer, feel free. Uh, as the past president of the global alumni, how satisfied are you with the support of the alumni community and what maybe could be optimized? Thank you very much. Okay, who would like to take that one first? <laughs> I can start. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so I will start with, uh, thank you for the question, first of all, and I will start with the um, uh, ITIC International. Uh, in the first uh, semester of the MC term, the support uh, was, let's say, more, uh, not necessarily customized, but to put it uh, briefly and honestly, I felt that uh, I was more listened to by ITIC International. And in the second semester of this year, I felt that there were some initiatives and some directions that were given uh, from the global plenary towards the entities without having open communication with the MCPs, without coming to the MCPs and uh, putting the discussions on the table and uh, asking for inputs and uh, for feedbacks and for building the strategies of ITIC uh, in the global plenary together. Uh, I know that they are very smart people. I uh, trust them in their decisions that they are doing, but what I would have liked to, to improve in the future was to be asked more about the MCP's opinion regarding this, because at the end of the day, the MCP is voting for everything that is happening globally. Uh, and I didn't feel that. And regarding ISEC uh, alumni, and especially in Romania, uh, what I can say is that I 100% get the support of everybody, of our board of alumni. Uh, thank you, Zipu, for this occasion, because I uh, know that you are here. I hope you still are. Yes, uh, it was great working with them. Uh, and I really enjoyed the, I really enjoyed this year. Um, anytime I had a problem or question, anything like this, I knew that I could go to alumni and I knew that I could receive an answer or a feedback or any input for this. So, yeah. Uh, thank you for this. Thank you, Romania. Um, Nassim, I saw you kind of nodding your head several times. You want to go next? Yeah, sure. So, yes, uh, it was a bit in the line of what uh, Ruxi just mentioned. It, uh, I do believe that the support that ISEC International that provided to us throughout the pandemic in terms of risk management, in terms of program focuses, the analysis and all, was very supportive and very like guided us to the right direction as an organization overall globally, but also as entities. So it's something that I really believe um, was done in the most efficient way uh, possible, taking into account the circumstances. I think also in the same line uh, that in terms of conversation in this current context, MCPs could have been involved more in terms of uh, I do believe that the global conversation because of ISEC International providing to us all these tools that are very powerful. Uh, I felt like we were left with little, little room in order to share how are the entity context, uh, how is the entity context and what is the need of entities. Uh, to give an example, it, it would mostly be about uh, the need for when it comes to finances, which is the biggest challenge for the entity in the, in the COVID. It has, I believe it has mostly been about uh, ISEC needs to change the direction of its programs because in the current context, it cannot function in the same way it was before the COVID. But uh, I do feel that even if the change man management was initiated, the period of the change management was underestimated. We cannot change what we have been doing in 72 years and have revenues today. And I don't feel that the support of ISEC International was provided in a 
strong stance enough in this way. So it's the only part that I would mention. Other than that, I really feel that the support was very strong in all the capacity building elements. Uh, when it comes to alumni, I think that for us, for ISEC in France, I don't know, uh, I think we didn't have a strong enough communication with alumni. With the board, we sustained a strong communication, but uh, uh, in terms of donations, for example, we were never able to reach the goals that we were, we were expecting. So uh, we didn't receive a lot of financial support from our board, but I think it's also the part of both how we were communicating for us as a national committee and uh, I'm not sure how we can like more collaboration with our alumni board in order to see how we can reach out to more alumni. But this is the how I see it uh, so far. Thank you, Nassim. Lea, how is it in Slovakia? How did you feel support from ISEC International and ISEC Alumni Slovakia? I honestly think that when it comes to ISEC International, uh, they were supporting us as much uh, as it was like feasible in that situation. Like uh, it was also a very new situation for them that they needed to kind of navigate and and adapt to the context. So I, I agree what was said uh, earlier by Nassim and also Ruxandra uh, here. Uh, when it comes to alumni uh, in Slovakia, uh, for, for the context, we haven't worked with alumni for the past three years properly. So when I was uh, kind of going into my term, I knew that I want to restart that. And luckily, we also uh, had the new board of alumni ISEC uh, Slovakia uh, established also uh, last year. So we kind of started to cooperate together a lot uh, in the past year, and I'm very grateful for the alumni, as I already mentioned in the in the beginning uh, when I was introducing Slovakia. Uh, I strongly believe that only thanks to the alumni, we were able to go through the most uh, difficult period of time uh, financially, because they really came together, even though the communication was not there for several years, and they willingly donated the money to help us and after that there were also more new initi initiatives uh, coming we established uh, regular alumni gatherings and the people started to help on LC level and national level with skills building with capacity building uh, spaces for us uh, they were always there to help us and and give us advice on how to develop new things so I would say that for us this year was a very uh, nice opportunity to reconnect with the alumni and I'm very happy and I hope that my successor is going to continue with that. I think uh, Kate appreciates your words. Uh, I know her for some years now and uh, I know what she's doing from the alumni side, what she can do. Um, thank you very much, Lea. And Dennis, what's the perspective of Germany on this? Yes. Uh, thank you as well for the question, Alex. Uh, nice to get to know you. As for um, the support from AI, so first of all, I have to notice here I'm giving this not from a perspective of an MCD. Um, so I can maybe also give a different light when it comes to other functions from AI. In terms of the support itself, um, I think transparency was something that was, especially in the beginning, um, something to build up on. Uh, where we could have had more insights, at least I know from my colleagues as well, that they were not clear specifically on the direction. Um, because in the beginning, it was to communicate very um, thought, like say, let's say very um, waiting, but then very clear. To give you an example for global volunteer, in the beginning, it was okay, um, it will be less of a focus, and then it was communicated now it's dormant, which basically means it's close, it should be closed, or it's encouraged to not be around in entities. And that was a big shift. And there was something that um, was not taking into consideration the change management, but also the mindset management that is necessary for a lot of entities that are basically built on, you know, and seeing only this one function. However, um, what I also want to point out is that AI was smart when it came to making fast, like not fast decisions, but making important decisions that are necessary for now. To give an example also from the BD perspective, that was a relatively fast switch to giving more resources to this. 
in comparison to how big ISIC usually is with more than 100 countries. It takes a lot of time to downscale and actually making these decisions and saying, okay, now we make to make, need to make a shift is something that may be upsetting now, um, but it's something that is necessary if we really want to see improvement in partially this generation and next generation. So in terms of um, making fast decisions and maybe uncomfortable ones to really drive a change, that was a good one, at least from my perspective. It is something that made many people not happy, but that is always the case when you drive something new and when you need to enable change. Um, in terms of financial management, um, it was not always clear, but this is also something I think that is very difficult for more than 100 countries. There could have been a stronger support system and taking leverage from um, entities on how much they actually pay. Um, or reducing it overall the amount that really needs to be provided by entities. Besides this, um, in terms of the knowledge that was provided, um, there were knowledge frameworks for everything, mitigation plans. I think that could have been more in detail. Uh, but besides this, the other things that here uh, all of you mentioned was also shared by me through the other uh, team members and also the MCP. So I can agree with that there. As for alumni support, well, it's really nice in Germany, um, I have to say. Um, we have a very strong uh, AG. Um, so we have, like, I have with them meetings bi weekly, um, but I talk with them more often than bi weekly. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a great system. We work hand in hand. We see them as a partner and not like just as people who are there. Um, so this is something uh, that we put high emphasis. Last year, we were struggling a lot financially. We had a record-breaking donation campaign. Um, so this is also something where we got a lot of support as well financially. Besides this, we always gain input uh, in the events. Uh, there is support. We do events in June with our gear together. Um, coaching is available. We have a mentorship program. They do now exchange with us again for scholarships. So they are actually very strong and great in our system. Um, I think what could be improved, but this is not the AG, but this is alumni in general, um, is that not every alumni is necessarily in touch also with ISAC. Um, so this is something where it could be more synergies beyond the super committed alumni or the executive board. I think this is something we, where we can leverage maybe more. And the part also of introduction, for example, to companies. This is something we have a lot of impressive alumni also in our network. But there, sometimes it comes to this, oh, yeah, I introduce you, but then there's nothing coming next to it. So it's like more of a lip service, at least sometimes. And I think this can be more specific um, on how the support is delivered and what is also expected from also the MC, to be honest, because this is always also not always clear. Um, so, yeah, I think this can be improved. But besides this, <laughs> to be honest, we are super happy. Like, there is not much I can say um, for Royal Germany. Um, when it comes to this. Thank you, Dennis. I think, uh, yeah, Irina already sent you a heart. <laughs> and we have now, before I move, uh, we have a couple of more questions. I would just say we had a couple of questions in the chat that were um, uh, in direction of one single country. I would like to ask the questioners to put in the chat to exactly those MC persons. We don't have to uh, did really the time to go into those questions uh, here. And I would ask Gergely to uh, ask his question to the MCs. So, um, first of all, uh, I would like to ask uh, not quite uh, an uh, ISAC related question, but uh, rather a more general question. How is uh, the vaccination process in, uh, in your country? Yeah, because uh, I guess uh, you all plan uh, to uh, to be vaccinated at some point. Thanks, Gagli. Who wants to start? Leia? I can, <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, so when it comes to this, uh, currently uh, it is it is slower than we would like to. 
but what is the good news is that last week they actually uh, made the opportunity for also people below 18. So currently, uh, not below, but like uh, uh, until 18, they draw the line at 18, which is great because up until this point, it was only people that are above 50 years old. So currently, anybody that wants to get vaccinated can register through a system and they are eventually going to be called uh, for an appointment. But as I was mentioning uh, in the beginning, it is slower than uh, we were expecting uh, because of the lack of vaccines uh, in the country, but it is on the good path, hopefully. Yeah. Thank you. How is it in France? Any different from Slovakia? It's uh, actually the same in terms of uh, the line has also been drawn until 18. So since this week, yeah, the m people more than 18 years old were actually able to, to get vaccinated. The government is planning until end of June, uh, beginning of July to have the widespread, like most of the population uh, vaccinated. So this is the current state. Uh, it did have some delays, but this is the current progress that it has in the country. Okay, how is it in Romania, Rushanda? Uh, we also have some delays compared to the targets of the government, but for you to get an idea, uh, in my MC team, 9 out of 10 MC members are vaccinated, and from the LCP that are currently in the summit, uh, 9 out of 13 are vaccinated, and the others are going to get some the vaccine. Uh, so I, I think that the, the youth, or at least the people that I know, are eager to take the vaccine, and we have uh, we have vaccination centers. There are lots of campaigns in multiple cities with um, a sprint of vaccination for three days. You need you can go without an appointment, any age. Those things, uh, crazy campaigns in the whole country. The only issue that I see is that people do not want that much to get vaccinated. Um, so I think that this is the biggest problem that we have in Romania. That it's very hard to convince Romanians to to get the vaccine because the possibility is definitely there to be taken. Okay, thank you. And Germany, Dennis, I know the situation, but share it please with the rest. <laughs> okay, um, so in the end, um, we started like every country basically from the most risk age groups to uh, the younger ones. Um, right now, to give you some specifics, at least that is what I still read few days ago, we are at 29 million, around 800,000 first vaccination, like first vaccinated, as you know, there are like two vaccination stages to go for, and around 8.8 .8 million for a second. Um, in terms of like having a country of around 88, 85 million, this is something um, we can work with, um, at least for a first stage. Um, besides this, in Germany, we have like free tests as well. So you can go to a test center, it's all around the country, and for free you can get tests to make sure that people are, you know, the numbers are not increasing. It's also going back again right now um, in most regions, which is a positive trend. So in terms of when the vaccinations would be done, I cannot, like, I'm not the expert to give the specific numbers there. Um, however, we are expecting to see um, at least a better second half of the summer, also for encouraging again maybe also the local side to have meetings with the small group stuff like this um, in the best case the first ones will also be already vaccinated um, so much that is possible yeah thank you and we are down to our last two questions we will have first one from jordan and then one from marielle and then this session unfortunately is over so if I didn't mention your name, please post your question in the chat so that the MC members get a chance maybe to give you a chat answer. And uh, Jordan, what's your question? Hey, um, first of all, guys, uh, Isaacers, big respect for what you're doing during these hard times and for keeping the flag high. So thank you uh, for that. My question, um, I'll just give a, a, a sentence before the question, um, and this is, uh, yeah, it's hard times during COVID, and um, we learned a lot how to cope with it, and um, um, in Isaac uh, Alumni Austria, we already created some new formats uh, of new events that we currently implement across all Europe, um, such, for example, as the twin alumni that we have. This is basically meeting another country in a virtual uh, uh, setup. Uh, what you can basically do with uh, uh, with MC countries, kind of like with ISA countries or with LCs, 
um, and uh, learning, uh, getting to know each other and having uh, uh, games there, drinks, uh, chats, and so on and so on. So um, maybe you have to try it. But my question goes in that direction. Um, from what you've learned during, during this year, um, is there anything that you would miss, that you are missing now as a format that you would say, you know, that might be a very nice idea to try? Um, and uh, is there anything that you tried out, it worked, and you would like to keep after COVID is over? And I mean the virtual formats. And my second question, if I'm allowed to, is there anything that you would need the alumni to do for you, besides probably the financial support that you mentioned several times? Thank you. Okay. Rushandra, do you want to start? I was actually hoping for somebody else to start so that I can think more, <laughs> but it's okay. I can uh, I can go. Um, I will start with the last part of the question because I think I have an answer there in terms of uh, alumni support. One thing that I have realized lately, talking to the LTPs and talking to ITCs in general, is that uh, at least in ITC Romania, we kind of lack the part of uh, hard skills, like uh, how to recruit people, how to make sure that we have the best profiles in our entity, um, the marketing skills that our members totally lack in this period of time. And I'm not sure if in this moment at the DMC level, admission level, we have the capacity to teach the people those things. So the support from the alumni that we have been already asking for in conferences, we are inviting alumni to host trainings for us, but this is what we would constantly need. It's just support in terms of hard skills and how to uh, bring people specialized in certain fields in order to deliver spaces. But this is uh, this is already happening in our conferences. Um, yes, and regarding the other uh, thing in the virtual uh, format, uh, some of the things that have been working for us that we have adapted was uh, just making the agenda shorter of the conferences, putting more breaks, uh, putting more activities with the people in the break. So this is something to, to continue uh, regarding the virtual format. Um, yes, I don't know if I have another, uh, another answer. It's fine. Great. <laughs> Nassim, do you want to go next and uh, put Rushandra out of her misery? <laughs> <laughs> sure, will do. So uh, on my side, I would say that something that we are currently missing, at least for ISEC in France, is uh, sales processes. That Now that we switched a bit into uh, not only volunteering or like no more volunteering experiences and mostly selling internship, but it's not enough to cover what the activities that we were doing before. Like we were trying to implement sales processes towards companies, but I do believe that we lack a lot of the processes regarding that. Um, something that I would like to keep is definitely how we developed a, an ability to work in a hybrid environment, both within our MC and with the local committees to not just rely on physical conferences, for example, but understand what is more relevant in which context. And for alumni, I would definitely say that uh, reshaping how we work with our board of advisors would help a lot because we, are, we do not have an ability as a national committee right now to mobilize the alumni community. Uh, not just for the financial part that, that I mentioned before, but also when it comes to you, support with uh, sales processes, for example, reaching companies and uh, uh, or maybe reaching people for uh, conferences. So we do have a board of trustees that is more about auditing the MC that is very supportive and that we established how to work together. But for the board of advisors, we're still lacking how to work with uh, our board in order to ensure we're actually efficient in the way we work with our alumni community. Thank you. Uh, any short answer from you, Leah? Of course. So uh, when it comes to the support that we need, uh, yes, like except the financial support, we for sure need uh, just more alumni to join our community or like rejoin and start communicating with us because we need the professional insights and inputs in our processes always and uh, what we would like to keep uh, the hybrid way of working for sure because we realize that some touch points are better virtual because we can engage more people and easier and quicker and i can keep it this short and we can move on 
Okay, thank you. And Dennis, also a short answer from you. What do you want to keep and what other support do you need? Mm -hmm. um, thank you for the question, Jordan. Also sounds very cool, the concept of twin. We will this in Germany as well. Um, for the format, um, you speak forum. Um, so basically also digitally having a platform where you create projects on the event that can target a pain in the world would be great. Um, and heading for the future to also go to a different question, um, to have a more long-term concept. So it's not only one event, but basically a series, basically like a subscription where people can develop. That will be a format I would like to explore more. What worked and what keep Youth Leadership Day and Youth Career Day, both are open externally. Both are a huge success for either our brand or actually for our revenue. So this is something I would love to keep and see also existing in non-digital times, if you could say it that way and um, support for alumni it's very similar to what i mentioned before promoting would always be helpful if you have people that you can introduce the event to speakers always welcome uh, to share some wisdom and also as i mentioned introduction also to partners so or if you see oh that would be great for my company or a company of a friend to have support there dennis maybe you saw my surprised face your sound just changed back to what it was at the beginning and it's a pleasure to hear you now even with a better quality. I don't know what changed, but it was better. Um, <laughs> and Jordan wants to make one small comment, 30 seconds or less. Oh, um, a very short one. Um, for the connection to the alumni, something that really worked well uh, in Austria, and we still keep it and, and we have it for years, have one person nominated in the MC being the ultimately responsible for the contacts with the alumni and let them meet on a regular basis with, uh, with the AAA boards. This is also a shout out to my colleagues from the AAA boards. Um, reach out to the MCs and invite them also to your alumni, invite them to your EB meetings even. We had a regular touch point on the EB meeting um, once a month where the MC told us what they do and we told them what we do in the alumni associ association. So just make the connection and have one person at least be nominated as, as the alumni responsible in, in your MC. That's it from my side. Okay, thank you, Jordan. And now Marielle hiding as Sipu or Mihai. So Nassim, I think you messaged uh, Mihai, but actually this is Marielle. It's the girl that you see <laughs> in the video who will start talking now, right, Marielle? Yes, the question. Yeah, the, the question is short and I guess it's more like an invitation. Uh, I believe that a, 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 an invitation is to alumni and ISEC to know each other. We need to know our plans, our current plans. It has changed so much, obviously, due to the pandemic projects and activities and objectives have changed. So we've been following and we have, I mean, a part of the AI board, um, ISEC International Board, and I, in constant communication with the innovation team in AI, and I know our example about the Heading to the Future initiative, which is a new program. I know it's new for IWA, and I don't know if you guys are adapting to those new programs already. I don't know if you see the relevance on them, but I guess right now we need to focus on trying, right? On piloting and seeing how alumni can help you to pilot those programs that maybe at the, at the time you feel that, oh, that's not gonna generate revenue, but maybe it does if you promote it to alumni who can trust you to taste your, or try new things like heading to the future program. And uh, as well, I'm very, I was very curious to hear that only few uh, of you are doing virtual exchange. At the end, I'm just inviting you to be very solution oriented, reach to alumni because maybe alumni is the one who can help you to run these initiatives that you never, as you say, we didn't do this for 70 years, why we have to do this now? But yeah, the reality is here. And I believe Dennis was the one saying, maybe this is a solution for a problem that we have even before the pandemic, which was, I guess it was not uh, accessible for everyone. And maybe the virtual reality is making it accessible for everyone. So my invitation is just that, um, how can we help you to run these virtual programs successfully? Because we know it can be it, it can happen. The other question is if you will be interested to pilot a program that we have for only ISEC members that we were running. So basically, we are de de developing the lifelong connection portfolio with ISEC International. It will be launching IC, and we're testing and piloting a couple of programs. One program that was very successful was this summer internship for ISECers. So it was alumni giving opportunities for LCPs, for EV members to have an experience. And basically it was the idea is that generate revenue for you guys as well and so on. It's very small, you know, it's only for the summer. But I'm just saying like, 
just try to look for solutions. Like don't, don't close your mind and like, oh, it's not gonna be possible. We're not gonna generate revenue. Just look for the right stakeholders. And I think alumni is your best stakeholder to try these new things. And I guess my question to you is, what is stopping you from that, for doing more virtual programs? I understand the conference part, but I'm talking about programs. That's it. Okay. Who wants to start? <laughs> I'm getting tired of pointing people out. <laughs> then I can start then, then you don't have to point. Um, thank you for that question. And also uh, very nice to see that yeah, for the lifelong connection, there are more things coming ahead. I think that's very cool and not always showcased on the ISAC way properly. Um, so that's very nice to hear. Um, as for what is stopping us more from the digital, I can just explain from our side. To be honest, from our side, it was mostly the legal aspect. Um, so we were missing, like it was, we wanted to start earlier with these projects and we were told we have to wait for like global alignments um, and that like it needs to be standardized, which is difficult when there's so many countries are involved. So in our case, it basically is based on giving, being given more freedom to explore our own approach to it. Um, but besides this, um, I think one thing I observed at least is we don't have many use cases in general for digital engagements. Like in Isaac, obviously we don't have, but to be provided more from this side as well, how does it look in a different context? Because there are many companies that already do that. And they did it also before uh, COVID. So it would be good to know, like, how could that look like? If we see how that program is executed, then it would help us in the process as well. Maybe to get to that question. Yeah, and the other thing is also finding out companies who actually want to go with that digital approach or also to go from the social side, NGOs or schools that say on different country, okay, how we want to do that and we want to explore it to have them specifically to be approached. So these are things that could support. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, Nassim, any common, additional comment from France? Yes, for us, I think it would just be about developing the capacity. Like, uh, I think it's just a matter of time that now that we want to run more of it for the virtual part, it's just about understanding what is the change management for it. So I don't think we do have like uh, se very severe complications or very severe challenges. It's just how we can implement it in a way that it can be also a long-term project uh, and part of the portfolio of ISEC in France. Okay. Leia, anything from your side? Mm, I, I would agree with Nassim and Dennis because we don't have like any other special challenges here. Okay. And Romania, hello, Rushandra. Um, yes, I think that for me it's a combination between uh, what Denis and Nassim mentioned, because I remember that in the first semester we applied to pilot uh, virtual programs and we were rejected uh, from ISIC International uh, because we didn't fulfill one criteria from all the list of criteria that were supposed to be fulfilled. Um, so, yeah, I think that it's also not that much freedom given from, uh, from ISIC International to try, to go, to explore, maybe to have some mistakes, but to get back on track and to actually move forward with virtual exchanges. I fully uh, support them. And now in the second semester, uh, this is why I said it's a combination, because from what Nassim said, we also didn't have the capacity to invest the resources at national level in this. We had in the first semester, the opportunity was not given to us and we switched our focus to try to find revenues from another part. So that was the story. Thank you. And I would like to ask all of our four MC members to also put their link to their LinkedIn profile into the chat to build your network and to build our network. And we already had a session today about LinkedIn and everything. So I think it's good to exchange some contacts here uh, and also to broaden uh, both our networks. Um, and I would like to ask all the alumni to give a hand of applause to our ISAC panel, to our speakers from the four different countries, uh, France, Germany, Romania and Slovakia. Uh, thank you for very much for joining us here today. Uh, thank you very much for your MC in recommending you <laughs> to, to join us here and uh, or your, um, your Isaac alumni people. <laughs> and with that, I uh, say again, thank you. 
if any one of you who joins at the moment wants to give a contribution to uh, Isaac Alumni Europe, if you like our event here today, feel free to go to our website uh, at isaacalumni.eu uh, and you can make a contribution like 10 euros. We already received uh, at least one handful of uh, donations. So thank you very much for all of you who donated. Uh, it makes events like this happen and also like uh, the next ones that we are planning. And with that, I would like to give you a break. <laughs> and we do uh, start at, again at 6.40. 40 German time that gives you like eight minutes when if you are in a different time zone and be very curious we have a living sustainably game for you so whatever you did not know about sustainability you will learn something I'm very sure about that we also have a prize for the winner we will ship it anywhere in the world so whoever wins will get this sooner or later the, the further you are away from me the longer it takes but it I guess it will make it. And with that, eight minutes of break. See you at uh, 6.40. And thank you again for the MC members. If you have to leave, uh, enjoy your evening and hopefully see you soon on one of the alumni conferences, live or virtual. Sounds good. It was a pleasure to be here. Danke, Dennis.